Hello, I'm Callum Barnes. I'm the head of AI and aerodynamics at Body Rocket, and today we're at Catesby Tunnel doing some testing. The UK isn't that great outside right now. It's very wet, very cold, and very dreary. Now, I'm not saying Catesby Tunnel is super warm right now, but it's definitely indoors <laughs> and it's definitely dry. So, we're here today with some riders from Steve Lorraine's team and we're gonna be testing different positions to see how fast we can make them. With this pilot program with Steve Lorraine, we're gonna have three visits with these athletes. And the first one is today in Caseby Tunnel. The next trip will be in the, the Derby Velodrome, where once we find their optimal position, they'll be changing different skin suits, different helmets, and all sorts of different accessories to see which one is faster for them. Then, on the third trip, hopefully the weather will be a lot nicer, it will be May, so we might get even a little bit of sunshine here in the UK. And as a result, we'll be in an outdoor setting, testing with them, their, all their different new kits and their positions to validate them outside in the real world conditions where they really would be racing. I'm Alistair, riding for yeah, yeah, yeah. Legato Racing Team. Here testing today, it's a new bike for me which I've not tested on before. Um, it's the fourth era of testing I've done over the last 10 or 12 years, so I'd be really interested to see how well the team here can get me in a new position on this new frame. So the procedure what we have is we'll do, we have, it's all run off a of Garmin, so we start and stop rides just like how you would normally start to a ride, that's how we gain our data. So there's three sets of cones. The start line at 300 meters, the one kilometer hold, and the turnaround point. If you make it to the end of the tunnel, you've screwed up, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. So from here, 300 meters, there's some yellow cones on the floor, and there is a big sign saying 300. At that point, we want you to be in position and at speed. So this whole point of here to the 300 meter mark is the acceleration phase, because when you cross that line, we want you to be in your position and you're going to maintain that position for a kilometre basically. We are a masters or a veteran racing team. There's 10 of us and we race uh, predominantly in um, veteran time trial championships, particularly at distances of 10 to 50 miles and some of us are going to be probably racing at 100 miles this year. We are currently the veteran time trial champions at 25, 30 and 50 miles and in the last four years we've been on the podium of every veteran time trial championship uh, bar one. So we've got a good pedigree. We've got four riders at Catesby Tunnel today, Tony Ball, Alistair Semple, Sue Semple and Deb hudson Lum and they are working with Body Rocket on their position on the bike and they'll be doing multiple runs with the goal of improving their position on the bike and becoming more aero and this is part of the preparation for that busy season. So here we have a bike with the Body Rocket system and for those who don't know we have a system that fits under the saddle, under the bars here and on the pedals. These isolate the rider from the bike, allowing for a direct measurement of their drag force. So today all the athletes will be doing multiple runs and each time they'll be iterating and changing one thing. So initially they'll start off with their baseline, which is a position that they've given to us for us to set up on their bike. And then mainly we'll be changing areas of the front of the bike. Specifically, one test will be a angle adjustment change, other tests will be stack height changes, and then some other tests are elbow pad width changes. And this is so we can see how their body reacts aerodynamically to the bike in different configurations. The road is so straight and flat, and, and that's great, but it's freezing. 
so yes it's a bit challenging but yeah you can just focus on the numbers and your position wonderful right, it was important to me to look at the front end um, of the bike because of neck issues that I've had so we've um, dropped the bars by from 22% down to 15 but that definitely was uncomfortable and um, so we've gone back up to that we've got the pads in um, and that's made a big difference so really comfortable so I know the front end now is set up angle of the, the armrest we've taken up to 23 degrees um, and then we've dropped the armrests so we've gone from 23 degrees to flat um, and now we're gonna we're gonna raise the stack by 30 mil so we're, we're looking at all those different physical adjustments we're on the bike so we can so we can determine which is the the optimum zeroing so we're gonna start the ride we'll see the Garmin here So now we're going to bring him in 20 mil and go the other way. In uh, sorry, so, in so 20 he started mil. in the middle, yeah. he's gone out 20, and now yeah. we're going to go reverse 20. So reverse 20, okay. Yeah, yeah. and we're going to see what happens there. Yeah, get his yeah. upper arms a bit, exactly. a bit more vertical. Oh. Nice, nice numbers though. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's good. They keep really going in the right direction. Yeah. Telling you <laughs> what runs have the lowest CDA, so R4 had the lowest CDA. So you asked Brian the question. No, it's not even asked Brian the question. Really? Brian automatically takes a look at your data. And Brian here is saying all the runs have good lap to lap consistency. And one shuffle was actually found on R4. But the other ones, there wasn't much shuffling. So now, instead of having to sift through all of it, yeah. Brian can then go, all right, here's a little. Just extracts it bit of information about intuitively, the data. Intuitively, intuitively, without actually being posed a question. Yeah, exactly. It just does it automatically. What are your findings of today? Um, that I was in a reasonably good position to start with, um, although we'd like to just test the um, angle of the bars increasing um, would also be interesting. Um, so I think for bars to be lower it definitely was definitely making me slower um, but having actually brought the elbow right the armrest in slightly was, was an, definitely an improvement so it's quite interesting that just to try some of the positions with lower bars to find it's actually harder it was even felt harder to ride a bike so uh, yeah I, I really a really intuitive positive day yeah has come out of this we've all got these ideas yeah. in our heads that we yeah. think we're gonna you know this is going to be faster than that and blah 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 blah, blah. but you can't really unless you yeah. unless you've got something that's going to validate it um, so in terms of validating it how many runs today did you manage to get through seven seven, we did seven. so and we and we've and we've we've come out with a with an with a 18 watt game 18 more times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that wraps up an amazing day of testing today. All our riders were able to find some significant gains in changing their position, and I look forward to applying those positions with all sorts of different kit and helmets. And when we're in Derby, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.